Was Jesus wrong about the end of the age? Atheists have accused Jesus of foretelling a soon end of the world that did not happen, putting both Jesus and the Bible in doubt. For Jesus indeed said, This generation will by no means pass away before all these things have been fulfilled. Let us read Jesus' words in their context and make some observations on his discourse. Doing so might allow us to form our own opinion of the prediction that Jesus pronounced. Now as Jesus was going forth out of the temple, his disciples came up to point out to him the buildings of the temple, how it was adorned with handsome stones and consecrated gifts. And one of his disciples exclaimed to him, See, Master, what tremendous stones, and what buildings! But Jesus answering him said to them, Are you looking at these great buildings? Verily, I say to you, as for these things which you are beholding, days are coming when there shall not be left one stone upon another, that will not be thrown down. Quite clearly Jesus was predicting the destruction of the Jerusalem temple which occurred in 70 CE, fewer than 40 years later. Thus some of those who heard him would still have been alive. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives across from the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew came to him privately and asked him, saying, Tell us therefore, teacher, when will these things be? What will be the sign when all these things are going to come to pass? And what is the sign of your coming, and of the consummation of the age? Jesus' disciples asked him three questions. 1. When would these things happen, that is, the destruction of the temple? 2. The sign that would precede these things. And 3. The sign of Jesus coming at the end of the age. Jesus will reply to each of these queries. This allows us to trace in Jesus' discourse two lines of prediction, a near future and a far future. And Jesus answered and began to say to them, Take heed lest anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, I am the Messiah, and the time is drawing near. And they will lead many astray. Do not therefore be followers of them. And you will hear of war and rumors of wars, but when you hear of wars and commotions and rumors of wars, be not terrified see that you are not disturbed. For all of these things must first take place, but the end is not to be at once. Regarding the end times, Jesus warns not to be misled by coming events that do not signal the end of the age. First, liars claiming to be the Messiah, and secondly, wars and rumors of war. In Jesus' language, the phrase, these things, refers to the coming destruction of the temple and the phrase, all these things, to the military and social circumstances of that event. Then said he to them, For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences, and great earthquakes in various places. But all these are the beginning of travail, and fearful sights and great signs from heaven shall there be. In a far future, as the end approaches, circumstances will grow worse. But take heed to yourselves, beware of men. For before all these things they will deliver you up to be afflicted 
and will put you to death. They will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and to Sanhedrins and to prisons. They will scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, but it will turn out for you as a testimony before them and the Gentiles. Before the coming destruction of the temple, civil and religious leaders would prove hostile towards the followers of Jesus. But when they deliver you up and lead you away, and bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and authorities, be not anxious beforehand, how or what you are to answer in defense, but say whatever is given you in that same hour. For the Holy Spirit will teach you what you should say, it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate beforehand what to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries can reply to or resist. And you will be hated by all the nations for my name's sake, and then will many be caused to stumble, and will betray one another and hate one another. Brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and put them to death. So you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, and by kinsfolk and friends, and some of you they will put to death you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head shall perish, by your patient endurance, gain your souls. Those years of persecution in the province of Judea would be marked by supernatural help from the Holy Spirit of God. Nevertheless, in a farther future, the followers of Jesus would be hated by every nation in which they will have multiplied. And many false prophets will arise, and they will mislead many, and because wickedness is multiplied, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into the next, for verily, I say to you, you will not have completed the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And this glad news of the kingdom must first be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then will the end come. The times leading up to the second coming of Jesus and the end of the age will see three great social movements. First, growth of false religion and wickedness. Secondly, Jesus' followers will flee between cities. And thirdly, the entire world will hear the good news. But when you see Jerusalem encircled by armies, then know that her desolation has drawn near. Then those in Judea, let them flee to the mountains, and those who are in the city, let them go out, and those who are in the country, let them not go into her. For these are days of avenging, that all things that have been written may be fulfilled. But alas for those with child, and those with nursing babes, in those days. For there shall be great distress upon the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive to all the nations. And Jerusalem shall he trodden down by the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. In the near future, Jerusalem would be surrounded by armies, attacked, and occupied by Gentile powers into a far future. The population would be massacred and taken into exile to all other nations. This came to pass around the year 70 CE. When therefore you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place where it ought not to be, 
let him who reads understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. He that is on the house stop, let him not come down into the house, or enter it to take anything out. And he that is in the field, let him not turn back to take his clothes. In a far future, the prophecy of Daniel 12.11 will be fulfilled. According to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this has yet to happen. And alas for those with child, and those with nursing babes, in those days. Pray also that your flight be not in winter or on a Sabbath. For in those days there shall be a great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the creation which God created till the present time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, none of humankind would be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, those days will be shortened. There will be the worst persecution of Jesus' followers in all of human history. Now at that time, if anyone says to you, Lo, here is the Messiah, or, Lo, he is there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders, such as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. So take heed, behold, I have told you all things beforehand. If therefore they say to you, Lo, he is in the wilderness, do not go forth, or, Lo, he is in the secret rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass may be, there the vultures will be gathered together. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, there will he signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts growing faint with fear and expectation of the things which are coming upon the world, for the powers which are in the heavens will be shaken. Towards the end, false messiahs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders. This has not yet happened. Following the time of intense persecution, celestial phenomena will frighten most of the world. And then will appear in the sky the sign of the Son of Man. And then will all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming upon the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then will he send forth his angels with a great trumpet call, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of heaven, and from one end of the heavens to the other. But when these things are beginning to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption is drawing nigh. And he spoke to them a parable, from the fig tree learn a lesson. Behold the fig tree, and all the trees. When its branch has now grown tender, and they are coming out in leaf, you see and know for yourselves that summer already is near. So also you, when you see all these things taking place, know that the kingdom of God is near at hand, at the very doors. When Jesus' followers see the end time events coming to pass, they will know that his return is soon to follow. Then everyone will see Jesus coming in the sky. He will then gather all of his followers to himself. Verily, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away before all these things will have been fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away. 
the disciples to whom Jesus was talking would not all die before armies would surround Jerusalem and destroy the temple. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but my Father only. Instead, just as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For just as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, till the day when Noah went into the ark, and were unaware till the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then will there be two men in the field, one is taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding at the mill, one is taken and the other left. So take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be engrossed with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly, for as a snare will it come upon all who dwell on the face of all the earth. Watch therefore unceasingly, praying that you be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are going to come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Take heed, therefore, watch, for you know not in what hour your Lord is coming. Most of the world will not be looking for Jesus' second coming, only his disciples will rise to meet him. Those disciples who were with Jesus in Jerusalem were to pray to escape all that was going to happen to that city. And those who will be alive at the end of time should pray to stand before him upon his second coming. Thus those who attribute to Jesus a gross error of prediction have themselves failed to distinguish near future events from far future ones. In summary, the events that Jesus predicted include the following. In the near future, there will be false messiahs, civil and religious persecution, help from the Holy Spirit, Jerusalem surrounded, the temple destroyed, the people taken captive, and some of those present would survive to see these things happen. In the far future, there would be false messiahs and false prophets, growth of false religion and of wickedness. The entire world would hear the good news, the abomination of desolation predicted by Daniel, lying signs and wonders, intense persecution, Jesus' followers will flee between cities, frightening phenomena in the sky and on the earth. Then Jesus will appear in the sky, and angels will gather to Jesus all who are His.